what we've done here, um, I've actually created a few different talent pools specifically for the use case. Uh, if you remember, we had three different target audiences. We had uh, graduates uh, looking for full-time positions. We had interns looking for internships. Um, and then we had just kind of a, a general student engagement uh, type uh, target audience as well. So really you can get very specific uh, in the types of talent pools that you are creating really to make it worthwhile and how you're categorizing them and how you're eventually going to kind of market to those candidates specifically. Um, we'll jump into maybe just uh, an example of one of these just to show you what that looks like. Uh, we don't have to go through the entire creation process, um, but to create a talent pool, um, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to give it a name and then you're actually going to assign it a specific status set in a default status. Um, so essentially this, uh, the, the status set is a way to kind of measure where a certain candidate is pre-apply. So this specific status set is different. The CRM status set is completely different than what you're used to with the application status set. So that's always something to keep in mind. Um, this is meant primarily just to measure a current uh, candidate status um, pre-apply. So as you're kind of engaging with them, you're nurturing them through CRM, uh, here's kind of a, a, a nice way to be able to, to measure them pre-application. Um, so you can see here we have our specific talent pool. Um, we actually have a save search uh, assigned here. So why don't we jump into this? Um, where let's see if we can type in business. Yep. And then we have business plus marketing. So we uh, identified our save search earlier. This one actually didn't have a save search. Um, but if we wanted to add a save search to a talent pool, uh, we have the list of save searches. So once we click that, once we search on a specific save search, we can add that in. If we wanted to add in a different one, we could add in one more. But let's just add in business plus marketing for this one. And now that save search has been added. So now if I check back tomorrow, uh, four candidates should be dumped into this talent pool just based off of the search criteria that we had listed out on the candidate search page. Um, we have the ability to make certain talent pools uh, private or public. If public, uh, essentially anyone with the uh, permission to access talent pools would have visibility uh, and edit rights for a specific talent pool. Uh, if private, uh, we can kind of control that by only sharing the talent pool with certain people and or groups. Um, so there is kind of a lot of power within who has access to the talent pools, both on a permission basis and then who we're actually sharing with uh, in addition. Uh, we have additional detail information below. We can actually add in specific objects to the uh, talent pools that then would actually help us filter off on various searches uh, within the actual talent pool section. So if we went um, to our filter bar, or we went to filters um, and we wanted to say search, say we have you know hundreds or thousands of different talent pools in here and we have been specifying certain talent pools only under specific divisions or departments we have the ability to filter down on those especially if our talent pool size uh, gets very very large so it's a it's a nice little feature there um, but why don't we take a look at the actual talent pool here again um, we have a specific university and the graduates from that university identified for this talent pool. Looking back to that use case, um, here we can see that we have two candidates in this specific talent pool. Uh, both actually are currently in the no contact status. That is the default status. Here you can see that status set again, different than the application status set. This is used just for CRM. And here we can really, again, kind of control and measure the candidates based off of what stage they are in. Have we contacted them? Have we contacted them and they're kind of interested in maybe learning more about certain job opportunities? Have we, uh, you know, phone screen them? Here's where we have control on whether or not, um, you know, we, we appropriate them to the right status. If we wanna just go ahead and check a, a certain candidate, uh, we then have the ability to change their status here. So if for this individual, we went from no contacted to contacted, uh, their status then would update and we can see that accordingly here. 
Uh, same look and feel though, uh, as what we would have seen previously in the candidate search section. We can see the candidates below. We have access to their candidate profiles. Again, we could add to a talent pool. Uh, if maybe these candidates are no longer a good fit, maybe we have a bunch of candidates and not actively seeking and not a fit, maybe we want to remove them from the talent pool. We have the ability to do that. And then of course, add directly to an email campaign and or follow those candidates uh, right there and then. Um, say for example, these uh, talent pools uh, have hundreds or maybe even thousands of candidates in here as well. There is a filter option here with again, the same criteria uh, as the candidate search section. So uh, essentially it's going to pull in talent pool as a search parameter. And then from there we have the ability to add in maybe different candidate profile extension fields, or maybe we want to pull specifically off the candidate profile itself. Uh, any of that information can be used here to then filter down on these results and, and really kind of organize those candidates appropriately.